Let's pray and ask God to help us through these tough tings. Tings. Oh. Tings. <laughs> oh, I love that. <laughs> hey, do you guys want to hear about my super weird dream that I had last night? Okay, so I was walking through Disneyland when all of the animals came to life. So Dumbo really flew around and the whale actually swallowed people while on the ride. It was crazy. I spent the whole night fighting the Disney villains and hanging out with the Disney princesses. It was super awesome. You know, this kind of reminds me about Joseph who could decipher dreams. But before we get into that, don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel and to check out our other fun videos. Does anyone here have siblings? <laughs> Raise your hand if you do, because I do. If you have brothers or sisters, you know that sometimes it takes a little grit to get along with them. In today's story, there are quite a few brothers, 12 to be exact. Holy guacamole, that is a lot of siblings. I only have three siblings, and I think that that is a lot. Grit is refusing to give up when life gets hard. But before we get into their story, let me give you a little bit of background first. Over the past few months, we've been going through the Bible, all the way from the very beginning. And in the beginning, we read that God made the whole world and everything in it, including the first people, Adam and Eve. But things went wrong when Adam and Eve broke the one rule that God had given them. Their relationship with God was broken, but God had a plan to make things right. It started with a couple named Abraham and Sarah. God promised to bless the whole world through their family. Abraham and Sarah had a son named Isaac. Then when Isaac grew up, he had two sons. Do you remember their names? We talked about them the past couple of weeks. Right, it was Jacob and Esau. Well, today we pick up the story of the Bible with Jacob's family. The siblings I talked about earlier were Jacob's 12 sons. And the second youngest son was named Joseph. Joseph was actually his father's favorite son. Jacob had a very beautiful and expensive robe made just for Joseph. Pretty cool, right? I mean, sure, we don't wear robes like this nowadays, but back then, this would have been a really big deal for Joseph. Okay, so this would be like if my dad gave my younger brother like a really cool one-of-a-kind pair of Jordans. Now, I really love shoes, and my brother doesn't really care about cool shoes, and my family knows this. As you can imagine, Joseph's brothers were really jealous of him. As we read in the Bible, Genesis 37, four says, Joseph's brothers saw that their father loved him more than any of them. So they hated Joseph. They couldn't even speak one kind word to him. Have you ever felt jealous of someone else to where you couldn't be kind to them? If so, then you know how Joseph's brothers felt. Well, it only got worse when Joseph had a dream. In the dream, Joseph and his brothers were in the field gathering bundles of grain. And Joseph's brothers' bundles of grain began to bow to Joseph's bundle of grain. Pretty wild, huh? Joseph told his brothers about his dream, which didn't make them too happy. Then Joseph had another dream. This time it was the sun and the moon and 11 stars that were bowing to Joseph. If the 11 stars were meant to represent Joseph's brother, then who do you think the sun and the moon were supposed to be? Shout out your answers. Right, Joseph's mom and dad. Joseph told his brothers and his dad about this second dream. And again, they weren't happy about it. He told his father as well as his brothers. Then his father rebuked him. He said, what about this dream you had? Will your mother and I and your brothers really do that? Will we really come and bow down to the ground in front of you? His brothers were jealous of him, but his father kept the dreams in his mind. Here's what happened next. Judah, Simeon, Levi, Reuben, where are you? Joseph isn't fit to lead sheep. I agree, but he's our brother. Half-brother. Said so himself. Judah is the one who should take over for father. 
Yes, but do you want a spoiled brat giving you orders? No. Can we all agree that something has to be done about Joseph? Absolutely. Yes. Yes. I agree. Hey, everybody! The little spy is back! I'm spying. I just Did wanted to... Did Father tell you to check up on no. us? No! Maybe this was a mistake. I, I just want to... Report on us to Father? You're his favorite. Uh, no! Uh, you look at scrolls all day while we're covered in sweat. Why is that, Joseph? Is it because we don't have pretty coats like you? I have uh, mine! Uh, that's my coat! Step aside, brothers. I'm the new head of the family. Bow before me, you sheaves of wheat. Oh, yes, Master Joseph, ruler of the world. Give it back. Now. If you want your coat, why don't you go get it? Really nice guy. No, I don't. Hey, Judah does. I got it. <laughs> I've had enough of this stupid game. Joseph! Who says what? this is a game? No. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? Leave me alone! Leave me alone! Stop it! Get in there! We'll think of something. Somebody! Please! Just get out of here. Maybe he can dream his way out. Don't leave me here alone! Can you guys believe how mean the brothers were? Well, guess what? It gets worse. While the brothers were still deciding what to do with Joseph, they saw some traders coming by who were heading to Egypt. The brothers came up with a really sneaky plot. They decided to sell Joseph to the traders. Come, let's sell him to these traders. Let's not harm him ourselves. After all, he's our brother. He's our own flesh and blood. Judah's brothers agreed with him. The brothers put animal blood on Joseph's robe so it would look like Joseph had been attacked by an animal. Then they gave the robe to their father, Jacob. Then in Genesis 37, 32, they said, we found this, take a look at it. See if it's your son, Robe. Sure enough, Jacob thought that Joseph must have died. He was devastated. Meanwhile, Joseph had been taken by the traders all the way to Egypt. Whoa, that's far. Joseph was so far from his family. I wonder how he must have felt. Joseph was sold as a servant to a man named Potiphar. Let's try to say that three times fast. Potiphar, Potiphar, Potiphar. <laughs> Potiphar was the captain of the Pharaoh's guard, which meant he was a very important man. As you might imagine, this was a really difficult situation for poor Joseph. Far from home, working as a servant with no friends or family to help him, but God was still with him. While with Potiphar, Joseph worked so hard and so well that he gained Potiphar's trust. Eventually, Potiphar put Joseph in charge of his entire estate, his home, his servants, his livestock, and all of his possessions. It must have seemed like things were finally turning around for Joseph. He worked hard, and all of his grit and trust in God had finally paid off. But there was more to Joseph's story. Potiphar's wife accused Joseph of doing something he didn't do. And even though he was innocent, he was thrown in jail. Have you ever had a sibling blame you for something that you didn't do? Then you had to take the punishment for them? That's how Joseph felt. Can you believe that? What a tough break for Joseph. But even still, God was with him. And Joseph refused to give up. He continued trusting in God. And even in prison, he worked hard. Man, he sure had grit. The man who was in charge of the prison was so impressed with Joseph that he put Joseph in charge of all the prisoners. God helped Joseph have success in everything he did, even in prison. Sometime later, two new prisoners came into Joseph's prison. They were the Pharaoh's official drink taster and head baker. One day, Joseph noticed that both of these men were really sad, and he asked them why. Well, it turns out that both of the men had dreams, but
but no one could tell them what the dreams meant. Joseph knew that God could help him figure out the meaning of these dreams. So he asked the men to tell him what they had seen. The drink taster first told Joseph about his dream. The man said, in my dream, I saw a vine in front of me. There were three branches on the vine. As soon as it budded, it flowered, and bunches of ripe grapes grew on it. Pharaoh's cup was in my hand. I took the grapes. I squeezed them into Pharaoh's cup. Then I put the cup in his hand. Genesis 49 through 11. Joseph told the drink taster that he knew what his dream meant. It was good news. In three days, Pharaoh would let him out of prison and give him his job back. Joseph asked the drink taster to remember him. He said, when everything is going well with you, remember me, do me a favor, speak to Pharaoh about me, get me out of prison, Genesis 40, 14. Then it was the baker's turn. He told Joseph about his dream. The baker said, there were three baskets of bread on my head. All kinds of baked goods for Pharaoh were in the top of the basket, but the birds were eating them out of the basket on my head. Genesis 40, 16 through 17. Uh-oh, the news was not good for the baker. Joseph told him that in three days, the Pharaoh would come for him, but the Pharaoh would put the baker to death. Everything happened just as Joseph had said. The drink taster was happy to get his job back, but unfortunately, he forgot all about Joseph. That's where we'll have to leave Joseph for today. Still stuck in prison for something he didn't even do. I want you to remember Joseph this week. When things get hard, remember that he is in prison, doing good for others, but his life isn't the greatest. But what do we know? Joseph trusted God. He faced his challenges with grit and worked hard in Egypt. He had a tough situation, but made the best of it. But when he was still far from home and even far from his family, even when he had helped people along the way, they forgot about him. But Joseph's story wasn't over, and he wasn't alone. God was with him, helping him every step of the way. When we have to face tough situations in life, it's important for us to remember that God is with us too. That's what will help us hold on and choose to show grit. Remember, hold on because God is with you. Wow, poor Joseph had been through so much. First, his dad gave him a beautiful robe. But then Joseph was sold by his brothers, lied about and sent to prison. Through it all though, God was still with him. We don't know the end for this story yet. We will find out next week. Remember, God helped Joseph to do such a good job along the way that Potiphar let Joseph run his whole household. The same thing happened when Joseph was in prison and he ended up being put in charge there. God was definitely with Joseph by helping him understand all those dreams. God was always with Joseph and God is always with you too. And that is what gives us grit and helps us hold on when we remember that God is always with us. Hold on because God is with you. Joseph couldn't see it right then, but his story was part of God's big story. The fact is we have to face some tough days in our lives, maybe like Joseph, you're not getting along with your family, or maybe there's a lot of yelling at home. Maybe someone is mean to you and hurts your feelings or lies about you. If you're in a tough situation like that, you should talk to an adult for help. Or maybe you and your family have just been through a lot lately and have had to face some big challenges in those times. It is important to remember that God's story isn't over. God is still with you and God is always at work. When we remember that, we can choose to hold on and keep going. Our memory verse for this month is a great reminder of that. It's Galatians 6, 9. So let's not get tired of doing what is good. At just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't give up. No matter how difficult the challenges are in our lives, we can keep holding on because God is with us. Let's pray and ask God to help us through things when life gets tough. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much that you give us grit and that you let us continue to have faith in you. God, I pray that no matter what challenges these kids face this week, they would continue to look towards you and continue to have grit. And in your name we pray, amen. 
Don't forget that we have in-person ministry for you and your whole family on Wednesday nights and on Sunday mornings. And don't forget to like and subscribe in our video and to check out our other fun videos. Man, I hope I don't have any other super crazy dreams this week, but I'll see you guys next time.